Carol, thank you so much for joining us here at the PLSA Investment Conference. I'm delighted to be here, thank you. You're going to be talking specifically about the relationship between asset owners and asset management and alignment and how that may have evolved over the past decade or so. Yes, and um, it's changed a lot, uh, mainly because the investment chain has gotten much longer. The assets that everybody is responsible for has grown tremendously around the world. And also investors have now been forced to take on so much more risk uh, to reach for return that actually a couple of dynamics have happened. Um, Short-termism has creeped into the system dramatically and that is creating quite a bit of misalignment. Everybody seems to be talking about it, but what I plan to talk about is really how to get at it. What, what are some of the underlying causes first and then really how do we course correct and get ourselves back aligned. Why is alignment key and why is it so important? Well, I, I, what I do worry about is sometimes this conversation is hard to have because it might sound self-serving, but in reality if we're not having it, it's more self-serving. It's really the importance for investors to make sure that everybody understands how the capital and the money is being managed. Um, time horizons is a big part of that. Uh, to be aligned with the time horizons of an investor and the time horizon of an asset manager is really the only way to actually create long-term value. And when those are not connected or, or aligned, then a lot breaks down. Tell me about that breakdown. What does misalignment cause? It actually for the end investors, it, what happens is people chase past performance. Uh, active managers get hired and fired exactly at the wrong time. Um, and I think we're focusing a lot on the debate around active versus passive, which it shouldn't be a debate. Both, both strategies are very, very important, I think, in terms of allocating risk. But as we think about um, what active management is supposed to be doing for investors and in allocating capital, you've got to have the conversation around time horizons because it's, uh, uh, you're seeing a lot of return being left on the table um, because of the churn that's taking place. And why does that short-termism creep in? What's causing that? I, I think a lot of things. I think um, we've, because the investment chain has gotten longer, um, we are all trying to do, do what our jobs are asking us to do and that is to hold each other accountable. Um, measurement is absolutely critical, but we've created these false sense of comfort to micromanage shorter periods of time, thinking that that's the way we can control risk and that's the way that we can hold each other accountable. Unfortunately, it takes us away from measuring the things that matter most, which is alignment, the conver true conversation. When you say you're long term, what does that mean? And how does that impact the end investor? And being more clear about those conversations is critically important for alignment. And we're actually at a conference that's about lifetime savings. It's about long-termism, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And I, I, I'm always amazed that we have not spent more time saying, well, let's, let's define your long-term goal and the long-term goals of an asset manager because they're quite different. Um, certainly trustees and pension funds are, are having to look at the full-blown allocation uh, of their schemes and uh, managers are obviously trying to generate alpha but they, their time horizons sometimes are very different and again being more clear about how that impacts long-term returns. I will also just throw in the idea that sustainability and ESG is a huge conversation the world is having and should but the idea that it's a separate outcome to me is we're missing the point back to the importance of actually creating long-term value takes time and if you really want sustainability if you really want true material ESG factors to be considered you've got to extend your time horizon and you've got to expect your manager to be doing that as part of their process. So right at the start of these relationships, people need to have very direct conversations about what goals are, what priorities are, what investment sort of no-nos there are, everything really, to make sure this relationship is sustainable for the long term. Absolutely. And when an asset manager says they're long term, truly what does that mean? We've been saying for decades, our goal is to outperform over a full market cycle. 
we need to do a better job defining what a full market cycle is because the disconnect of what a full market cycle actually is, even going back 100 years, is seven to 10 years roughly. Most investors know that, but the industry has anchored itself around three-year numbers. And it's not that the three-year number is the wrong number, it's just that there's a misalignment in terms of when expectations should be met. And does this shrinkage happen more when you're coming towards perhaps what people perceive as the end of a cycle like this? People become Absolutely. more protective? No question. And I think there's, there's, this is when the discussion usually happens where we're dialed up on risk. We're expecting a lot of outperformance over price momentum biased benchmarks. And we're not considering the risks we're taking there. Um, and what some of the work that has been done by some great investors at the IMF and, and other areas have said, you know, what you want to pay for it is counter cyclical skill. And many times that means, especially in a three year number, you should expect a negative alpha. It's something, it could be sometimes the best thing you pay for. But again, as an asset manager, we have to do a better job being clear about how we're managing money on investors' behalf. If our holding horizons, or seven to eight years, what does that mean to the investor? We're committing capital on their behalf because we have so much conviction in the businesses we own on their behalf. That's, that's our side, but do the investors understand what that takes in terms of their commitment to the manager to actually reap the benefit of, of that allocation? And um, the benefit for this industry, the pensions industry, is that it is a long-term future. It's not something that has to be an immediate return, and, and that should be remembered at all times. At all times, and, and unfortunately, short-termism is getting the best of really the entire part of the chain, and I think we have to stand up and make sure, one, to collectively we fight against it, but again, I, I think we not only have to have the alignment conversation, the good news is I actually think people want to have that conversation today, but we are the opportunity is the innovation that's going to come from it around measurement, around pricing, around things that we really need to get at as an industry. And a conference like this with a thousand members of the industry here sort of facilitates those conversations quite nicely. Yes, and it's so great because as you challenge the conversation, the feedback we get is to really understand where investors' heads are and how we can respond. Carol, thank you so much for joining us. Great to talk. Delighted to be here. Thank you.